All right, y'all, let's talk Ring of Honor. We started off with uh, one of the semifinal matches for the uh, ROH TV Eliminator title, bullshit, Eliminator, whatever, tournament thing. Um, Shane Taylor versus Christopher Daniels. Shane was who I wanted to win, but I just hate when it comes off so obvious. It was a great match, but it just feels like every time we see Christopher Daniels, he is just helping other people look good. And that's not a bad for a veteran to do, but I still feel like I want to see some opportunities with Daniels. Now, um, I'm glad they picked Shane for this because I think that um, it would just look better. I think you'll get a really cool match with um, Shane Taylor versus Samoa Joe. Now, next, we had a really great um, tag match with the Iron Savages and uh, Ozzy Open. I was really impressed with the Iron Savages. Now, you guys remember them on um like dark dark elevation on youtube and stuff like that they would always come out and they would be doing basically nothing um at that time they were known as bear country and honestly they didn't really work out for them um but either way they had a really great match and this is their second time that i felt impressed with them since they've been in roh you could really see the growth and um the chemistry has definitely changed with them in their definitely looking so much better as a team um they do have um jack jameson who has done trios with them in roh too so um i think that's also helping them as well they were looking for trios gold and now they're looking for tag gold that didn't end up happening but you can really see how much they've improved in the ring so um kudos to iron savages to for looking so much better in the ring i really hope we get to see bigger and better thing with the ROH tag division because they actually did start off pretty good when they started um, with ROH all over again a few months ago and somewhere that got lost so I'm hoping we get to see really good things with um, Ozzy Open being the champions they're super super talented so next we have Stoltley Hathaway who's already basically announcing another uh, TV title eliminator tournament I guess he's basically saying that we already know that Samoa Joe is going to beat whoever wins the tournament. We might as well have another tournament to have someone uh, win that while Samoa Joe is just chilling at home and relaxing. Now, while he's talking, here comes Dalton Castle and the boys. Dalton is mad because obviously Stoltley was paying favoritism to Samoa Joe um, at the Fort Asana pay-per-view, which is why Dalton lost that's not why he lost but that definitely helped him lose now um Samoa Joe comes out and Dalton's like hey I, I want a rematch like I should get a rematch after what happened so Samoa Joe makes it seems like they're gonna get a rematch but instead it's gonna be Samoa Joe and Stoltley Hathaway versus the boys so Dalton's not gonna get a chance to get in the ring with Samoa Joe and that's gonna happen next week and that's gonna be insane now on to my favorite match of the night not just the night but one of my favorite matches so far this year it was just 11 minutes just slightly over 11 minutes josh woods versus shibata oh my god now i love pure role matches and these guys just oh my god what, what they did to me i i can't even begin to say stuff like that on youtube it was a beautiful and josh woods reminds everyone exactly who the hell he is in this match and later on he does cut a promo about how upset he was obviously that he lost and that he needs to find himself and um you know give the josh woods that um that he is and that he used to be in roh this match was so lovely and for a long time I've been wanting to see something like this, like these two guys really um, showed what the Pure Rules title is all about. And um, at some point in this match, like I know it's 11 minutes, but it really felt like it was longer than that. And you could just feel like these two guys were just trying to outdo each other. And I really like that. I 
you know, I don't even know if I could describe this. If you didn't see this, try to go out your way to see this because I really feel like this match kind of put the title back on the map. Now, Shibata has been doing really great things, but to see two opponents in the ring that are on the same level, I know a lot of people might not see Josh Woods like at the same level as Shibata, but he actually is. And in this match, it absolutely shows. Shibata does obviously retain the title but I don't mind seeing these two guys go at it again. And if Josh Woods would have won, it would have totally been deserved 100%. Now, after a wonderful match like that, um, yeah, the cards start just dying down for me. We had Zach Clayton versus Dalton Castle. I like Dalton, but I just did not care about these two. Dalton takes the win. We also have Jura Joel and Nick Camarado versus the Infantry. This was okay. It was a little bit better than the match before, but still not capturing me. Another reason why is because we don't have really any stories going on in ROH. So this is a reason why some people may not like gravitate towards these matches. So next we had Layla Hirsch versus Miranda Vianette and I didn't like this. This felt like uh, Miranda was paid to just stand there and get her ass whoop. The only interesting, only interesting thing here was that Maria Canellis was watching, dressed out like she was in a funeral. Um, so I, I think that there's some ties between um, Layla and Maria. I don't know what's going on yet, but we'll find that soon enough. That was the only thing that was interesting about it. Layla takes the win. Then we have the next semifinal um, eliminator match for the TV title, and that was Tony Nese versus Gravity. Um, Gravity comes out with his space suit and shit. Oh my god, I I just can't get with this gimmick. It just feels like something you would have seen in the mid uh, to to early '90s in the WWF. It's just absolutely insane. Um, Gravity wins and I'm mad that Gravity wins because last collision Gravity has a match with Samoa Joe and he gets his ass handed to him in like less than two minutes but then yet he's still advancing in this tournament to go against Samoa Joe. Ugh, annoying. I, I don't even see the point of this at all. Gravity wins. The gimmick I, I can't get behind. He is talented though. Um, he should have taken the loss. I would have preferred Tony Nice to advance in this tournament. So up next we have Athena versus Diamante and the women's title is on the line. They have a really great match and I've actually been wanting to see these two girls in the ring. However, there was no story going on and that's been so annoying you guys. But anyway, they have a really great match. I love their chemistry. Um, Athena didn't uh, dominate this the whole time, so I'm glad that it didn't go out that way like it does in other matches. So we did get a chance to see some really good stuff for Diamante, but ultimately Athena wins and retained the title. Now, a little bit later on the night, um, Lexi is talking to Diamante about her match, and Athena, what she ends up doing, I forgot to say this, but after the match with um, Diamante, usually Athena would attack the person she just had a match with. But for whatever reason, she decides not to attack Diamante. So later on, Athena explains that she sees herself in Diamante and that Diamante has what it takes to go far, but there's something missing about her and she needs to go out there and find it. And while she's out there finding herself to stay the hell away from her. Now, I really like that because that puts over Diamante and she's really talented. So I do hope that whatever it is that Diamante is missing, she ends up finding because let's be real here. The way Athena has been progressing in ROH makes me feel like it either happened too fast or ROH has not taken the time to build other women um, to be close to um, that title scene. And it's just like, that's not a good thing for either way, you know, because now it's like, well, Athena's at the point where she's just bored. And everyone else who's watching are bored too because we're like, no one she's getting in the ring with seems close enough to beat her. So at this point, they need to build up the ROH women's division. 
Um, in the meantime, maybe they can feature Athena like on Collision or uh, Rampage, Dynamite, whatever. But at this point, it just seems like Athena doesn't have much to do in ROH. And it makes me feel like maybe they just moved with her too quickly. I don't know. So from there, the show was whatever. We did have Case of Agony versus the boys. The boys didn't stand a chance. So yes, they lost. Um, we also had Cole Carter versus LSG. Now, this was actually not bad. Um, Cole Carter, the last time I remember seeing him was like on Dark. And he was he was supposed to be a tag team with somebody but he was a face during this time so now he's more of a heel he was really really cocky in this match i thought it was going to be a squash match but it wasn't and during this match maria is out again watching uh cole and i'm just like okay that's interesting like maria maria's coming up with some kind of super group or something i don't know but cole really looked great in this i just didn't find it too interesting um, simply for the fact that um, some of these matches just kind of feel thrown on together and once again not enough stories but I think this was great for Cole for his first time being a heel I guess I don't know I think he looks great um, his opponent did okay now up after that we did have Robin Renegade versus uh, Christina Marie uh, is whatever I didn't like it Robin takes the win um, last match we do have is a work horseman versus El Hijo de Vikingo and Commander. This was really great. Um, to be honest, I want to see Anthony Henry versus El Hijo de Vikingo, um, in a solo match. So that would be pretty cool to see. Um, but I do feel like everything was great here as far as chemistry goes. It didn't even really feel like a main event, to be honest. Um, something about the energy was a little bit off compared to usual so i kind of thought there was another match after this so i was surprised when the match finished that there was nothing after it um elijo de vikingo and commander takes the win they both do a 450 centon onto um jd drake so i guess that's a 900 centon or whatever i don't know um the match was okay. The energy was a little bit low compared to how these guys normally are. Anyway, I think all four of these guys work well as singles competitors, and I think they do well as tag teams as well. Um, honestly, I think that when it comes to the Ring of Honor show, they can have less matches and focus a little bit more on some of these stories because that's what's killing the show right now. Guys, thanks so much for watching my review. I'll be back next week with ROH again.